My name is Stefan Allen Music, and today I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to build a relationship with an artist. Let go. Stefan Allen Music. One thing you never wanna do is beg to work for somebody, to beg to be somebody's friend, just to, you know, gain something out of the situation. Some of the best relationships that you'll ever have will just come organically. You might just hang out, you know, something as simple as that, hang out, have a conversation. You never wanna work with somebody who you don't really have a, a good feel on. It's really bad, it never, it never goes the way you want to. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. A lot of times it don't. So, in my opinion, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You don't have to force it. Another thing you should watch out for, you should always be yourself at all times. Just be yourself at all times. Your reputation matters in this industry. Your reputation really is everything. Always be polite, always be professional, and oh, you know, just chill and showcase your skills. You don't have to brag, you don't have to show off, you don't have to do none of that. You gotta prove who you are anyway. Don't over oversell yourself. Never oversell yourself. Undersell yourself. And then when it's time for you to sit in that hot seat, over deliver. And that's how you build your reputation. Don't ever be pushy and try to do all that extraness. It's not, it's not necessary. And it's only going to backfire you in the long run. How you find artists, it's easy. Social media. We live in a digital age. You can find anybody anywhere. What you want to do if you're just beginning, before you reach out and try to reach to the upper level of all these type of level of artists, what you want to do is find one local artist that you can get to. So it could be somebody you work with. That's how I found like all of my artists. They either work with me at these jobs, at, you know, these odd jobs. Or they were brought to me, they were a friend of somebody's friend, and they were brought to me on the first night, we kicked it, and then later we started doing music. And then from there, we just, you know, have conversations play video games and stuff like that and just chill and just make music. Music is like an afterthought. You should never bring it up. We all make music, obviously. You don't even have to bring that up. Hey man, this, you, you working on something? No, no, yo. That's how you should be. What you doing today? What type of vibe you on? Oh, we doing this? We going over here? We doing this? Oh, you wanna make music? Then come through. You feel what I'm saying? Just let it, let it come natural. Cause music, when you're making music, you don't wanna force it anyway. You'll never get a good result from that. Like I said from my first point, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Keep it organic. Be yourself. And for me, I always listen to the artists and hear their point of view, hear their story. That way, when I'm making production specifically for them, not leasing no beats to them, like making an exclusive beats specifically for them, I know their vibe. I know where they want to go. I know what direction they're going in, all of that. And I can just put that emotion that I think of them, when I think of them and hear their voice, put it into production, the music just comes out 10 times better. Just 10 times better. Because I know this person. So you always want to have a sense and a vibe of the artist that you're working with. Keep it organic. One day, the person you're working with might be the big artist. So never reach. Never reach. It's not even worth it. You're going to be wasting a whole lot of time just trying to knock on a door that wasn't meant for you. Don't always forget to look to your left and right. You never know. Everybody wants to do music. Give everybody a chance. You never know. And it builds your experience. Experience is priceless. You can't even put a price on that. You can't buy experience. Yes, you're going to struggle. Yes, you're going to have arguments. Me and artists have damn near have fist fights and all of that because they brought somebody and they I didn't like that person and the vibe they was giving me. And it's just, you know, things go left really quickly. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's music. It's the music that matters. If you want the best product, it's got to come from the heart. It's got to it's got to feel right. It's got it's got to come together organically. I'm going to just keep saying it. Like, just let it happen. Don't ever force it. And, you know, keep your ears open. Listen more than, what, than how much you talk. If you're a talkative person, sometimes you're going to have to get quiet. Let the artist vent. They're telling you exactly how they feel. And you should listen. And that's how you're going to be able to make the best product. It's something that's overlooked because everybody has an ego. Check your ego at the door. That's been an old rule in my studio. Leave your ego and your problems at the door. You're kill, you killing the vibe. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? My homie used to always say that. Killing the vibe. Leave that ego at the door. Nobody's better than nobody when we step in the studio. We all here to work together. And be friends at the end of the day. Because if it don't work out or it do, you're going to have, you're going to need people you trust around you. And you want to be able to kick it with people you know. Be yourself. Stephen Allen Music. Alright, so we're about to start the session after technical difficulties with my Pro Tools session. Because I had moved the files somehow they it they wouldn't link back up and create itself and I tried to manually do it didn't work so I had to luckily I made the beat in Pro Tools so all I had to do was just bounce in place again and boom we on the beat you know good to go let's get it when it comes to 
problems in the studio, as an engineer, you're not supposed to let the client know. You're supposed to problem solve like with the quickness and just fix the problem as quickly as possible and uh, just get it done. There's, there's no excuses once you book the session and session starts, you're on the clock. Everything's gotta move smoothly. Now, problem is on my half, I didn't, he told me last night what beat he wanted to work on and I didn't double check the session. So, completely my fault, wasting the client's time and it, that's not good, so my reputation take a hit tonight, but, you know, lessons learned, lessons learned, luckily it was a quick fix, it, it ain't going to drag on and all of that, so, good to go, but, for all my engineers out there, problem solve, when you on the clock, you got a problem solve with no excuses, you can't, you don't have luxury of excuses once you charge for somebody you're on the clock, just to let y'all know, so, keep working. As an engineer or producer, always check on the artist and make sure they don't need anything. Just, you know, just tap them like, yo, do you need anything? You good? They might say yes, they might say no, you never know. If they need something, just go handle it for them. Just, you know, quick tip real quick. Just to be, keep it professional, keep the vibe going. Because you don't want the artist distracted while they're writing and in their creative flow state. You want to keep that flow state as much as possible. So, you know, every once in a while, every hour or two, you know, Double check on them. We're all human beings at the end of the day. At the end of the day. So, okay, I'm gonna get back to work. Sorry, ad libs. Yeah. You ready? Hold up and drink some water. Pro tip <clears throat> you wanna drink water in between every take. You gotta keep the, you know, keep the throat lubricated. I don't want to hear nothing all up in my microphone, okay? Stay hydrated. No smoking in your session. Trust me on it. Trust me. Believe me. I'm a prime example. <laughs> I'm a prime example. Ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. So uplifted, drifted, fix it, find a way, find a way, way, way. Alright, All right. so Sour just finished recording his hook. So what I'm about to, we just listened to it a couple of times just now. Let's just make sure there's like no extra pieces that we want to add or subtract right now. He says it's cool for right now, so he might make changes later. So just to keep the session going, I'm going to go ahead and fly the hooks and let him get straight to his verses because I don't, I don't count any songs as complete without two verses on it in a hook. So we're just going to keep the session flowing and see how the night turns out. <laughs> Definitely not using that. <laughs> Cut, cutting them straight out. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. We gotta find a way. We gotta make this happen. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Long run. Woo! Clyde, die. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Reality. Woo -hoo. Right. 
All right, so Sour just finished his first verse, made it through. You know, the first one's always the hardest one to get the, the feel of the track fully fleshed out of how you want to execute. So my advice is always, always practice your verses before you record. That way you can get the... Because it might sound good in your head, but when you're actually trying to say it, you might have an accent or something like that where you speak a certain way. So when you're actually recording on a track, it might come out a totally different way. And the one that counts is how you actually say it because we're capturing a performance. So always, like, you know, practice your verse out loud before you record. That way you can get the kinks out a little faster. Or you're going to be taking 100 takes. That's, that's really why you're having a problem recording, and it's taking you a long time. Usually, recording recording the final vocals shouldn't take but a, like a few takes. It shouldn't be taking a lot. It shouldn't be taking it shouldn't be taking a lot at all. Like for me, when you see me do it, I do mine in like two, three takes at the most. Cause I practice for a good ten minutes on a verse. You you have to be dedicated to that verse that much just to make sure you get it right and get it get it right when you record. That way, you save money recording. Tip of the day. Yes, sir. I have my remote, but it's not reliable. <laughs> yes, like, I'll be pressing the button. That shit's not recording. <laughs> <laughs> Go back, double check my take, and it's not there. Be like, man, fuck that damn remote. Old fashioned. Bang, bang. Yeah. Boo, me and you, been through, shh, yeah, yes I, mmm, woo, leave. <laughs> Atlas be making no sense. Uh, hey, Atlas. Migos! <laughs> Good, y'all. Day two. So I was writing this third verse right now. We're gonna take it slow. Point blank period. We're gonna take it slow. Compete one record at a time. You know, get get the sound right, get the music right. That way when it's time to release, we're not worried about too much. Because you gotta be confident in the music, and that's what it's all about. Let's get it. Let me give y'all a pro tip on writing. Okay, so you have a record that's three verses. You gotta make sure each verse links to the next one. So the storyline has to progress with each verse. So beginning, middle, end. Especially when you're doing a track by yourself, it's beginning, middle, end. Cause you're only competing against yourself. You don't have to write the hardest verse in the universe unless you have features. If you have features, as long as you're Staying on topic, you can write the hardest verse ever. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of artists take get carried away with, with when they do features to just write the hardest verse possible and don't even be talking about the subject matter of what the hook is talking about. So it's not cohesive. That's why a lot of records don't work because everybody, it's just name recognition basically. But if you want music to last, write a story and each verse needs to be another piece of the story, a different point of view. It could be this, just a different point of view, but from the same perspective. So, like, it's different ways to do it, but we'll get deeper into that as we go along with the different um, records. So, hey, pro tip, just make it, it's got to make sense. It's got to make sense, okay? <laughs> Ready? Yo. Hot. One of the lights ever, yeah. Hey, pa. so profound. <laughs> I'm stupid for that. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking on that part. Oh my gosh, I was still like, oh my gosh, hot. Woo, all the lights. Ever, hey, bow. Uh. 
down. <laughs> All right, so done recording. We're gonna listen from top to bottom just to make sure everything's cohesive. See if we need to add anything or take anything out. And then after that, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just mix the record and that'll be the night. So we're just gonna work on one record at a time. So if we don't finish. A record in, in one setting, we'll just, the next day we'll just finish it, finalize it, and that'll be the night for the next night for it, and then move on. That way we always go into a record with a clear, a clear vision, because you know if you're recording back to back to back to back to back to back, sometimes you'll start uh, using the same topics over and over, or the same flows over and over, and for this, I need him to make sure that every song is unique so that they can stand on their own. So if we have records that don't make the cut for the final album, he still has a bunch of singles that he can still throw out and they sound totally different from what the album is. So nobody even will know when he recorded them, how old they are, it's not gonna matter. You know what I'm saying? They gotta be able to stand on their own. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> 